Hi and welcome. This is the AWS Builder Cards instruction video. My name is David. I'm a solutions architect in AWS and I'm the creator of this game. But today I have some help. Would you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Elena. I'm associate solutions architect at AWS. Hi, my name is also David and I'm also a solutions architect here at AWS. I will be showing you how to play the game. So I hope you learn a lot today and enjoy. Enjoy. So, what is this game about? AWS Builder Cards is a deck building game. That means you have a personalized deck and round by round you build your deck a bit better, you enrich it with AWS services. You start with a set of on-premises cards and gradually build up and move towards the cloud. Ultimately, you become well architected and that makes you win the game. It's maybe a bit tricky to get to know the game in the first place, but I promise you once you've played it one or two times, it's as easy as riding a bike. There are three different types of cards available. First of all, you have your builder cards, and they consist of key AWS services, tools, and frameworks. Secondly, you have your starter cards. They come in different colors for each player and they're indicated by a gray S in the top left corner. And finally, you have your well-architected points and those are required to win the game. And there you can either, either have one point or three points. So let's look at the cards in detail. If you look at the card, you see the title at the top of the card. In this case, it's Amazon ECS, a container service. If you look a bit further down, it says it's a compute service and it's that means this service belongs to the compute category. Also, the orange resembles that category. And if you look in the middle, there's also the icon that you can use in architectures when you work with this service. Now let's go a bit into the game mechanics. If you look at the top left corner, this is the cost of the card. So what you pay when you want to acquire it from the marketplace. If you look in the middle on the right side, there are two values. One is a dark gray and the other is orange. So the dark gray resembles TCO credits, total cost of ownership. This is what the card gives you back because total cost of ownership never goes away. But this card also gives you AWS credits and this is what the card gives you on top. Lastly, this is an architecture building game so you can combine the cards. This card, for instance, Let's you draw a card when you combine it with Amazon EC2. Lastly, if you don't know what Amazon ECS is, the QR, the QR code on the bottom of the card will always take you to the service microsite where you can learn more. When you're playing a two-player match, exclude the well-architected cards, then include the three or four player symbol. Accordingly, if you play a three player game, include the ones with the three player symbol. And if you play a four player game, include every well architected card. This keeps the game short enough for your work break. Let's build the marketplace. In order to build the marketplace and prepare it for the game, first shuffle your builder cards. And once you have shuffled them, put them down on a pile. Next to the pile go the well-architected cards. Make sure that the one-point cards are on top of the three-point cards. Now just unfold five cards from the top of the builder cards pile and this is your marketplace. Let's play a three player match. So we have our marketplace in the middle and we have one, two, three players. I will start. So to speed up the first couple of turns a bit, there's a special rule in the beginning. I am now allowed to take one card that costs TCO credits. That means the dark gray icon in the top left corner. So I will go Let's see, what do we have here? I will go for an Amazon Elastic Cash. 
I immediately refill the marketplace and the card that I acquired, I put it here on my pile of starter cards. Now it's the next player's turn. We go for an Amazon EC2, nice. And it's turn of player number three. Refill the marketplace. Okay, and now we go in reverse order. That means player number three takes again one card. Now that all players have their 10 starter cards plus two builder cards, everyone shuffles their deck. Once you've shuffled it, put it here on a pile. This is now the so-called resources draw pile. From this resources pile, everyone takes five cards. This is now the starting hand for the turn. Again, I will begin. So I have lots of premises, obviously, and one Amazon Elastic Cash. Let's see, the AWS CDK costs four AWS credits and I only have two, but I have lots of total cost of ownership credits to spend. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven TCO credits. That's really a lot. And I can basically buy anything that costs TCO. This is, by the way, intended. So I will go for an Amazon open search service. I refill the marketplace. And everything that I deployed here on the table, everything that I bought and everything that I did not play, I wrap it all up and I put it next to my resources pile and this is the so-called discard pile. Now, before I end my turn, I draw the next five cards from the resources pile and now it's the turn of player number two. Now, when I have figured out how much credits I can spend, I can buy from the marketplace, but I'm restricted by the game here. So no matter how many credits I have, I can only have one buy action. So you have to choose what service or topic or AWS card you want to invest in. You can unlock more buy actions by utilizing the cross combination effects. So let's have a look at how to build architectures in the game. Here I have my starting hand of five cards. I have three starter cards which contain on-premises and I don't consider these here in this turn. So let's put them aside. Let's look at what we have here. I have an Amazon EFS and I have an Amazon EC2. So EFS is a shared file system that can be used with instances. So let's combine these together and this is one architecture. An architecture has to be two cards in order to count as architecture in the game. Now when we look at the cross effects here it says draw a card when you combine with Amazon EC2. So we could now draw an additional card from our resources draw pile and maybe extend this architecture. Depending on the cards you have in your hand you can build one or more architectures. So in this case, I built one architecture with Amazon EC2 and EFS. I built another one with Amazon S3 and AWS Lambda. And the third one is not an architecture, it's just a card that I have, but I can still use the credits that it gives me. So in total, I can count and sum up all the AWS credits and all the TCO credits that all architectures, including the single cards, give me. So now I'm at a stage where I want to draw my next five cards, but I only have two left. So I take these two and now I take my discard pile and shuffle it. And now my discard pile becomes my new resources draw pile. And this is how deck building games work. 
So I have my two and I draw the additional three. I have my five cards to start with the next round. So it's over to the next player now. Once you have drawn 5 cards from the stack, you can check whether you have more builder cards or starter cards. If you have more builder cards compared to the number of starter cards, you are allowed to retire one of starter cards. Normally, you would put well-architected card separately from your discard pile. But if you would like to add an interesting twist to your game and also potentially extend the time to play, you can also put this card into discard pile. Let's look at a more advanced architecture. So here I have my five starter cards and you see I have more AWS cards than on-premises starter cards so I can immediately retire this card here. So let's, let's look at what we have here. Uh, Amazon CloudFront, okay, this goes probably first. Then we have an Amazon S3 and an Elastic Load Balancer. So both can be combined with CloudFront but if you know CloudFront, um, then you know that you can also serve both types of services with Amazon CloudFront. We go with the dynamic content for the Elastic Load Balance and the static content goes to Amazon S3. This is a valid architecture here. But we would need something behind the Elastic Load Balancer. So fortunately, I have an Amazon S3. So this is a good architecture already. So let's look at the combination effects and what that architecture gives me. So before we start counting the AWS credits, we go for the cross effects. So, okay, this applies when we combine EC2. Nope, we don't have that, but we have that, 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 okay. We get one additional buy when we combine this CloudFront with Elastic Load Balancing, check. But we can also draw a card when we combine it with Amazon S3. So we are now able to draw a card here from our resources draw pile. Let's do that. Oh, I got an EC2 auto scaling, which can be again combined together with my elastic load balancing and my Amazon EC2. So when I do this, I can again draw a card and get one additional buy on top because this is kind of a rare combination that I have achieved here. So let's maybe do that. Fargate. Yep, we cannot use Fargate in this combination. So this is maybe an extra uh, here nice to have but we don't have a container service here so there is no need for Fargate but hey we have lots of points and lots of buys so we have drawn all the cards so we have finished our build phase now let's look at the buy effect so we have two buy effects so in total we can buy three times from the marketplace which is already a lot but we also can spend a lot of credits if you look at this here this gives us four when we combine it with Amazon EC2, so we have already four from this. Then we have two from here, which makes it six, eight, 10 for this cross effect, 13, 15. So in total, we have 15 AWS credits to spend. I'm, and I'm, I'm not even the counting the TCO because, you know, we always have enough of TCO, but this is a lot. And 
you know, I would go for some well architect points in this case. Once the last well-architected card is taken from the pile, the players can count their points. The one who has the most wins. Now, let's talk about best practices. So first of all, when you build your architecture, it's incredibly important to utilize the special effects on the cards because they allow you to obtain more points. Secondly, utilize the buy effects on the cards because using them, you can acquire more cards which can help you win the game. And finally, I know building architecture is fun and stuff. However, you shouldn't lose your focus and actually buy well-architected points because they are needed to win the game. And if you aren't fast enough, someone else might buy them before you can. This year we are introducing collectible cards. So let me show you how the collectible starter cards work. Here we have two examples. One is a certification, the other is an AWS event, the Berlin Summit in this case. How do, they work? How do they work? So as you notice, they are starter cards. They have the gray S in the top left corner. And that means they go to your personal deck. So you can really think about personalizing your own starter deck for future matches with friends. So when your personal deck consists of certifications, you should make sure that your opponents have the same level of certifications than you in order to have a fair game. So when playing with collectibles, Always remember these are additional starter cards, so you cannot get rid of your 10 on-premises cards. These are always on top and you can also use a maximum of 5 additional starter cards. Also, you must not use the same card twice in your deck. So they are unique and you can extend up to 5 cards and in the future there will be more than 5 cards and you have to choose wisely how you build your personalized deck to fit that. There are also collectibles that extend your base game. For instance, here I have the AWS account team collectible set. You get this maybe when you engage with your AWS account team, like account managers and solutions architects. Who knows, there are much more collectible packs and we are super excited if you discover these. But um, for now, all you need to know is they go into your game. It's not about personalizing your deck. It's about personalizing your game and making the game a bit richer. And this is how you play AWS Builder Cards. I hope you enjoy it as much as we did. Till then, take care. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>